Kevin, how are you? I'm fine, good job. Good to see you. Hi, Hello, Mr. Brendan. Hello, Nathan. Good to see you. Hello, Mr. Brendan. Hello, hello, Sir Levin. Good to see you. Alia, 13, and Alia, there are just two Alia. I'm here. Uh, who is that? It's Spooky. Hey, Spooky, how are yeah. you? Uh, Very good. Uh, hello, teacher. Hello, Tim. Hello, good to see you. Hello, Kevin and Lewis and Mr. Spooky and Alia and Kevin and Ellis and Tim. Naked and Bone. Good to see you, Bone. Yeah, and, good to see you too, teacher. Yeah. Did you have a good day today, you guys? Sunday? Yeah, of course. Yeah, what did you do? Tell me some things you did. So today I, I did a test and I did get the level is C1 advanced. Was that good? Yeah. Very the nice. level was C1 advanced. What is C1? What What is that? English or math or science? Uh, English. English, yeah. And so what can you do with that? Can you get great? C1 is uh, yo. Uh, seven, uh, is seven I-E-L-T-S. IELTS, IELTS, seven, level seven IELTS. Lewis, oh, you know I about get that? seven of IELTS. Eleven, level job. seven. <laughs> great yeah. job. So that's through British Council, you guys. Thanks oh. for saying it, Tim, yeah. Uh, British Council, yeah. IELTS, I-E-L-T-S, uh, right? C2 is 8.9 to yeah. 9 aisles. aisles. Now, can you use that to get into a really good public school or private school? Like for real? Yes. I, I think yeah. I yes. Because yeah. I, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, think, I, I think I don't trust Bob because right now I'm like, I'm really higher. I'm like older than Bob, but he could do C1, but I yeah. just only do B2. Ah. Uh -huh. Did. Yeah. All right. So, what was Nick and you were saying that you get scholarships based on really good test performance? Is that what Nick and you told me that one time? Uh, did I? Yeah, you said I want more scholarship money. I'm getting good test grades or something. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't really remember, but it is true. Yeah, you said, hey. Brendan, help me with this. I want to ask my school for more scholarship money because I'm doing better and better and getting prizes and stuff. Oh, yeah. Were you successful yeah. in doing that, Nathan? Could you do it? Yeah, I did, but... Hey, congratulations, Nathan. Yeah, nice. Nice. Okay, I'm just waiting because we started a little early. We have three more minutes until we actually start so I can keep asking you questions. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, What's please. that, Ken? What is that, Kevin? Hey, who's drawing on the screen? Don't put on the whiteboard. I'm going to disable that whiteboard. No, not me. You're going crazy on that whiteboard the last day of class. Who can start something sharing? Host only. Yes. Who can initiate drawing? Host only. Ha, ha, ha. This whiteboard must stop. It's crazy. And if you yes. do more, you guys are going to go crazy and have bad dreams if you use all those colors. All right. So... Uh, let's see, and we'll do, 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 all right, so we have about two more minutes, let's make sure we have everybody is here, hey, Ellis, nice story, I enjoyed your story, right, and Alia, nice story, good stories, you guys, now it's just red, so you guys, we don't actually have a whiteboard, we have a red board, uh -huh. <laughs> nice, <laughs> Okay, new whiteboard, continue. Oh, all that beautiful artwork is gone. Oh, oh, my God. oh teacher, oh, my you're God. turning on the, uh, the, the whiteboard, Bear Brandon, MC Guo, Go uh, one. Gowan, MC Gowan. I'm like, MC is like DJ, MC Gowan. All right, hey, uh, What's new, Tim? How was your Sunday in Hanoi? Did they clean up all the typhoon stuff? Uh, yes, it, it was sunny. Yeah, and was it pretty bad? I saw a lot of trees down. This Australian guy makes a video. Uh, made... Teacher, yeah. uh, my school, uh, because of the, the Yagi storm uh, in my school, uh, yeah. tree, uh, it, the tree, one tree has been chopped down. Now, did the school think that wasn't safe for you guys, for you students? Like we have in my street, have many kind of trees fall down. Now, are you in Hanoi, Kevin? 
No, I mean Hong Kong. Yeah, and so the typhoon was pretty bad there. Yes, last time I got lost of my electricity. Was it dangerous though? Because sometimes trees in the streets can be dangerous for motorbikes and bicycles and people walking. Yeah, I'm so to clean it. What did Tim say? Tim, what was that? Oh, my music teacher says that when he went to Ning, uh, Ning Bình, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, her, the, her younger sister, uh, school was, uh, the roof was flat. flat. Oh, the roof <laughs> collapsed. It fell down. So oh, that no, means... it's no, it's flying. It's oh, the flat. roof flew. So there's no roof on the school. <laughs> So what are they going to call those sunshine sunshine classes? I like them. Hey, who is mysterious person? <laughs> Raise their hand. Who is our mysterious person? I see it's Mr. Fancy Liam again and playing his ninja skill. He's yeah. John Doe. I John wonder John. if that spooky John. buck is Cookie's here. Ryoko is here. Macon is here. Lewis, Alia, Alia, Ellis, Tim, Mysterious. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have we have Ellis, oh, John. Oh, who's angry that I lost her homework or something. But that's not Ellis Eleven. It's a Mysterious J person. What is John? <laughs> I would. Oh, Mysterious J would be John. Now we have two Johns. We have John from Dong Nai, and we have John from Hanoi. Uh, do you know how to pronounce numeral or try microscopic okay. okay, let me try <laughs> new microscopic <laughs> mushroom pizza. <laughs> That's phenomenal or dry microscopic silicovolcano coniosis. Oh, but there's silicone on my pizza, so that it's micro mushroom <laughs> silicone pizza volcano ashes. Teacher. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to eat a pizza like that. <laughs> Teacher, oh, teacher. Who, what, what? Who is that? Is that Macon? Who, hey, yeah. Macon. Um, there is one kid in my basketball class, and he's kind of short. So one of my friends named him a very good name. What's the name, Macon? Microscopic Timmy. Oh, Microscopic Timmy. Tim, don't let them call you that. You're a big guy. You and Timmy, you <laughs> and Timmy are like strong Hanoi boys. Microscopic Helio Volcano Carniosis. Yeah, that's the spewing <laughs> volcano ash in your lungs. Okay, let's check if everyone's here. Alia, you're here, but you're quiet today. Ellis is here. But in my participants, I also have Mr. Ruyoko, who wrote a really nice essay. And Tim, let's start with Ruyoko. Ruyoko, if you're there, but sometimes you say you have problems with your um, microphone. Is that right? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, that <laughs> microphone sounds like a killer robot, Ruyoko. Um, so what are we gonna do with that? What are we gonna do with that? <laughs> it's the it's the one that's actually working. That's like Star Wars. Can you say that again? Yeah. Can I read mine? Said mysterious person in Hanoi. Is oh, that teacher! John? I read. I renamed. Uh, I I renamed my name. You oh. know, Michael Scott is okay now, can you? Guys, today we're gonna. Oh my God! Are you kidding me, Tim? Today we're going to read, just read your work because you guys did a great job. I don't really have anything else to show you, but I'll show you an example of a great sci-fi story, you guys. Are you there? Okay. Yeah. You have to be careful. Today I lost my connection because I was trying to get these stories. And so we have, uh, first let me move it here. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so let's see. Put this back. And Ruyoko stays out on my desktop. And why isn't it being nice to me? Be nice. Come on. Where's Ruyoko? Okay, there we go. Ruyoko, this is really cool, actually. Teacher, so like, can I read mine? Well, to you, Ruyoko, are you still having that robot problem? <laughs> what the? Yes. Oh, can someone, can Teacher, I read your work? Is it okay I, if I read my work. Well, how about Tim? Tim just wants to read so badly. I want you to read Ruyoko's work because we have the... Robot voice would sound kind of strange for this Robot one. Voices. So, Tim, I want you to read, if it's okay with, with Ruyoko, can you read The Secret of the Mountain, which is a really fine story that uh, Ruyoko wrote. Are you want to try it, Tim? Uh, Ruyoko's homework, Secret hmm. of the Mountain. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a mountain as high as the sky and as cold as ice. Uh, surrounded by a seemingly endless and thick fog. Ah, teacher. Yes. Uh, the, 
the, the sky is 100 kilometers to reach okay. the space. All right. Continue reading, Tim. <laughs> uh, uh, it rumored. It's rumored. It rumored that that's a great, great secret lying in the heart of the mountain, meters in the earth, waiting to be discovered for decades. Mm -hmm. Many have challenged <clears throat> the mountain to attain its secret, but none had succeeded till five years ago. Yeah. Advanced Agar grammar here to describe the situation. Mm. It becomes had succeed. Yeah, or Yoko used this none had succeeded means nobody. It, uh, team, team can copy them as John. Ah, okay. Hey, Mr. Kevin, would you like to read this part? Two brave men sought to defeat. Uh, Two brave men sought oh, to yeah. defeat the mountain. To getting the name recorded uh, in history. It was one of those two men, and other one was a set of mine. We ventured around all the obstacles on the, that the mountains has to offer, from giant rolling boulders to a bone piercing coal that it can even make diamonds crumble. For 10 days, we fought again a world mountain for, and, ten, and for 10 nights. We battle against the internal cult. Yeah, wrath is like when a mountain or anything gets really angry. Wrath right. means it's going to attack you. Wrath means it's super angry. What's hey, that? Mr. Tom, how are you, Tom? Hello, I am good. Tom, can you read this? We're helping Ruyoko read a story because he got caught in a robot voice. Okay. Ultimately, uh, ultimately we have managed to read the entrance of the mountain's heart. A large gate that leads to a stairs seemed to spiral down with no end. After a few hours of walking down and almost falling off, we reached the bottom of the stairs. I opened the grand door and that guarded the mountain secrets. And all of a sudden, a wave of warmth walked through us when we entered. There it was, the literal heart of the mountain. A pulsating heart that chants how to fit the cold and the danger that his blade holds. With a single powerful strike of my blade, I pierced the heart and exploded into pieces, knocking me and my assistant back. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Pulsing means like the heart is like the human heart, opening, closing, opening, closing. So he pierces it. What did he put into it? Um, His blade, his knife blade, maybe a sword or a big knife. I'm not sure, Ryoko. Ripple, your rules. Yeah, well, really cool, right? Oh, wait, but I'm going to hold your mic. What is oh, this? But Tom, you're saying that in an Indian person's voice. Okay, mute. <laughs> Next, let's go to Nakin. Nice guy, Nakin. Can you read the blue part? Okay. Without the power provided by the heart, the place began to crumble down. We ran as fast as we could, climbing up the stairs again, but we were afraid that we could not make it. But luck was on our side, as the crumbling cave pushed us up to the surface right before the place completely collapsed. We returned to our home, victorious with a piece of the heart in our hand, using it as a trophy for our achievement. Now it rests on my shelf, still radiating the faint glow of the power that it holds. Yeah, he brought a piece of that heart, but it sounds like an evil heart within the mountain. So, Ruyoko, my only question, do you think it's safe to bring back a piece of the heart? What if it's so evil it regenerates and it gets really big again on your bookshelf and it starts to get evil again and grow really big inside your house? Do you think that could happen, Ruyoko? <laughs> I mean, even if it did, it, even if it, uh, we grow back, uh, it won't be any of a threat because because it doesn't have anything to uh, to uh, provide its, its powers. Oh. oh, I see. It was drawing its energy from the mountain minerals. Oh, so it's like it it has a it it can gener generate its own energy, but uh, in all. In order for the energy to be uh, evil, it needs to be directed into something. Hey, Ruyoko, did you make that story yourself or did you get an idea from like a manga, anime, or book? I did that all by myself. It's really cool. You put like this 
pulsating heart within a mountain so that the whole mountain is actually like an evil organism. Excellent work, a very fine story, Ryoko, really, really good. Um, Ryoko, for your numbers, just for everybody so you see this, you should write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. You have to write out the numbers from one to 12. So don't write like two people, like the, the number two, you have to write T-W-O. And that comes from America, the University of Chicago and the American Psychiatric Association journal is really fat each year. And they, those two organizations started this crazy thing. You have to write out the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. All right. So you guys, uh, Tim took a picture of himself with the mononucleo something, nani, nani, nani. Japanese say nani, 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 by the way. Hey, Mr. John joined us. How are you, John, with the raised hand? Can I read my work, please? John, I hear you're making good money chopping up all the trees after the typhoon and selling the wood so people can make Christmas fires in December. Is this true? What? what? I heard you become one of the richest kids in Hanoi by you and your friend were cutting all the trees that fell down during the typhoon, making toys oh. and selling it as firewood. Is this true? Oh, no. <laughs> Why don't you... Plan. I'm just joking, but be careful. I heard this guy yeah. Tim and his little brother Billy are gonna grab the wood before you can, and they're gonna oh, chop. Teach. The wood. Oh, teach him. <laughs> that was my joke, you guys. Because teach sometimes in America, my, my no, dad. you guys <laughs> listen. I'm gonna read Ellis's homework because Ellis, I lost your homework. It, it's something weird. So you, yes. you're called mature Ellis. So sorry about that, Ellis. You left me a message. You said, "Uh, teacher." Oh, no, no, you said, <laughs> "You guys are getting muted. You're being crazy. You're being crazy." Okay, mute, mute, mute those microphones. Are you ready, Ellis? Would you like to try it? Um, mature no. Ellis. Only mature students can read this. So mature Ellis is going to read her story. Ellis, I wanted to correct some of this with you, if that's okay. There are only one or two things that I didn't get a chance to correct. But here's Ellis. And behave. Don't talk over Ellis or she'll punish you. She's a strong young student. Right, Ellis? <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. Ellis, you went completely black. Where are you? Where's Ellis, what happened to Ellis? Ellis, I, your microphone is on. I, I'm speaking. Oh, your Ellis is 11, but Ellis 12, who calls herself the mature Ellis, where are you, Ellis 12? I don't know. Ah, oh, I'll tell you what, Ellis 12, can Ellis 11 read your work? Ellis in Ho Chi Minh City. All right, um, let me just see. There was something I found one more mistake, so I'm sorry about that. Oh, Ellis, there you are. Ellis 12, turn on your mic. Can you read for us? Ha ha. All right. Ellis 11, can you read Ellis 12's work for her? We'll put this on. Hello, Ellis 11. Are you there, Ellis 11? Can you guys hear me? What happened? Oh, there's no volume. Oh, no, I don't hear anybody. Yeah, here. something strange happened. Something strange happened. Ha ha. Ellis 12, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Ellis 12? I can hear you. Okay, but it's hard for the microphones. All right, Ellis 11 or Ellis 12, read this mature, you guys, this is funny, mature and handsome Ellis. Right. So yeah, Ellis 12, your microphone's coming through in small pieces, so there's something going on. Ellis 11, would you like to read? Yes, yesterday I was, yesterday when I was coming home from extra circular, my mo mom told me that my aunt bought a ticket to a place called Playtime Champion, 1250 at Park Mall. Mom, I thought I will go to the cinema with the MT. But she replied, but your aunt already bought the tickets. Then I dialed my mom's friend's number to tell her that I'm not going to watch a movie with them tomorrow because I have another plan. Today, 
After having lunch, my cousin shouted to me and my siblings, let's go. I prepare my I prepare things and put it in my bag. There are coats, hats, face masks, and bottle of water. Mm -hmm. Finally, we changed our clothes and went downstairs. My uncle booked a taxi for us while they were waiting for me. Later, we finally arrived at the mall. It was huge. It was large. At playtime, there are many cool games. The trampoline, slides, mountain climbing, ETC. Yeah. I enjoy playing there. The slides are so slippery. I recommend you to go there. Yeah, nice work, Alice. Um, she has this thing at her school called extracurricular. Do you guys know that word extracurricular? Uh, so you know, that means the activity that is outside the school. Yeah, yeah very nice. Yeah, extracurricular. So your curriculum is your math, your science, your Vietnamese, your English, your basic classes. But if you have extra classes after school finishes, it's called extracurricular fun things, sports things, things for students to do, like maybe a chess club or something like that. Hey, Alia 13, are you okay? You have a mask on. Did you get the COVID again? Or are you, or is it that African monkey pox that you're trying to fight? I'm really tired. Oh no, are you okay? Do you have like tests coming? Alia mask is just a fake. I know, but, he said, but it, he's really tired, he said. All right, I hope you feel better, Alia. Um, where is Mr. Uh, Lewis raised his hand? Lewis, do you want to read your story? Yeah. yeah, it's a cool story. I really like it about the... Lewis, was this kind of a true story? No. Okay. Yeah, because I, I wrote my message to you. It was, you know, about um, there. Please keep your dream alive by Lewis. This is a really cool story, you guys. It's about um, two friends who help each other to be astronauts. And I thought that was really pretty darn cool, Lewis. So let's see, we'll go here. Please keep your dream alive. Hello again. All right, here you go. Here's Mr. Lewis. Uh, please keep your dream alive. Anton and Bobby are so nice. They knew each other like brother in a family. They had a chance to meet uh, each other when Anton's family moved to South to the Bronx. At, the, at that time, Anton was four years old and Buddy was two. When they was in primary school, they always had a dream to explore the moon on their own. They had read a lot of about aliens and UFOs. Also, they started to explore how to sustain their life in space. They kept their dream alive for a long time. And when Anton was 19 years old, knew that he had to uh to do his dream now, so he he the history with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, hmm. and he was rising a bit to their program. But he wanted to apply to study there too, but he did to finish his high school high school school, so he spent one more year of before his graduation. After early graduation, he came in to be hard work on target to be the first astronaut in his family. He invested two years study to work in an application NASA. By and by, he could study at NASA from his army with him. Uh, Anthony, anything spending more than two years working for NASA in uh, 20, 2018. Yeah. When they was about to reach 40 years old, they both received a notification from NASA. They, they told the notification would say their salary would be rise, but they, are, they were wrong. NASA invited them and two other astronauts to a project to track on the moon and do some experience experiments. The project was called Apis 15. After that, they were trained to survive in space for several months on on fifth March uh 2018. 
They finally left the twenty seven to fly through the space to the moon. Finally, Anton and Buddy spray well land on the moon and they started doing experiments before walking on the moon. Their individual weight on the moon was decreased six times than their teacher please gone. Then their way on Earth. After spending more than a week on the moon, their spacecraft returned to Earth. In the end, they, they returned to their neighborhood and everyone they welcomed them like a champion. Their story has been shared for people all around the world. They were both born in a middle class family, but they transformed themselves to the allies of society because they could now uh, consider us space explorer. In an interview in 2021, they were asked, do you have any advice for the teenager of today and even younger people? They anonymously respond to all of you who are watching. Please give your dream a life. Yeah, That's really it. nice, Lewis. I wrote very nice because this almost sounds like a true story, like it was in a magazine. I was really impressed by that. I really thought it was cool. Just two old friends who help each other become astronauts and finally get to travel when they are 40 years old. It's a great detail, Lewis, because there was this one guy who was from Canada and he sang a favorite song called Rocket Man, which is the same title of that uh, short story we read last oh, week. What? Yeah. And th that astronaut was maybe 35 or 40. No, he was about 40 years old, too. So he's similar to what you wrote, Lewis. Nice. Thank you, Lewis. Hey, Mr. John in Hanoi with the uh, pneumonia. Hey, sir, may I read mine, please? Well, we have Can to I read John. mine, please? Everyone's going to read their story tonight, you guys, because this is our final class for basic writing three. And of course, I hope you take basic writing four because. Uh, yes, I'll take basic writing four. Please, please, I need basic writing four. I need the fourth one. What? Because you guys are becoming much but I didn't learn basic writing for because uh, teacher. Yes. Uh, do you got basic writing five? Um yeah, we're just gonna keep making the courses and using Hopefully. The Hopefully. You guys, you guys are just getting better and better. So I told Ms. Duke that maybe we have to put your best stories into a writing journal, right? And the reason why I want to put those in a writing journal is um, because it can show your very best work for students who want to start in a class like basic writing one or two. You guys will be like their heroes, their role models, right? Hey, John, what's the title of your story? I'm looking for it in my <laughs> oh files. Oh my God, who do I have it? Whenever the ocean, ocean, Tom, that's his crazy name, but what's the name of his story? Oh no, that's his crazy oh, name. Your mom is behind you, Tom. John, what's the name of the story? Me? Yeah. That's BW3, uh, week 9, John 11, Hanoi. But, but I mean, what, what's the title of your story? John? Uh, the ah, most teacher. Oh, I I can can you. you better let me talk on your letter, please. All right. Go ahead, Tom. Tell us what you need um, to say. Can I guess? <laughs> what, what? Yeah, it's basically. Now, I just took a story. I took, I took a story on a diary of a Wimpy Kid and just extended it. Yeah, oh, that's what I. Wimpy Kid extension, yeah. Yeah, What's I just. Like, John, just, what is the name of this? Uh, the Mystery of the Strange Smells. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let me see. It says Sunday writing class, August 25th by pneumonia, blah, 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 blah. Oh, um, your mother is behind you. No, no, what happened here? This is crazy. This is not what we what? want. I mother. sent you the, the, work, the work of chance. You know what I'll do, you guys? I'll um, go to the Zalo files, but I have to be careful with this because I did this the other day, and it... Uh, I did this this morning, you guys, and it stopped the class. It dropped me out of the class. Oh, and right. I remember. And, yeah, and Tom, I felt like a loser. And, uh, and I didn't remember someday in the debate class. Teacher oh, the debate class. It was shocking. On, uh, on Microsoft Word, and he yeah. just absolutely got kicked 
our classmates <laughs> like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is he? Where is he? And then that one boy. What is going on? Yeah. And then, and then that one boy said, you know what that one boy said? Henry from Canada. Oh, good. Teacher's not here. Now we can do free talking and just talk to each other. Oh, great. Oh, that was on. really nice. <laughs> uh, oh, Henry. He's a super cute kid, but he's mischievous, you guys. Mischievous. Very mischievous. I have been annoyed. Oh, my God. What is As the Japanese would say. Yeah, you know, yeah. This is crazy. This is crazy. There's Ellis. I found Ellis's mature Ellis's work. Ellis eleven bone is there. You guys are all getting a chance if I can find this thing. No, I I sent my work to you in the chat box. Oh, okay, should I pop it open in chat box because sometimes that thing acts really crazy too. I'll do it. I'll try it. But if I get disconnected, I promise I'm coming back. I'm like I'm coming back, John. I promise I'm coming back. <laughs> All right, John, I think we got Boys, it. I'm I back. think we can do this. I'll be back. Okay, ready? Here it is, John. Nice work. The mysterious smells. And these smells didn't get too gross. Oh, yes, they did. These are gross Be smells. You. Here Be you go. You. Be you means bad smell. You asked what that okay. means. Okay. The story of the mysterious smells. Part <laughs> one. The PU shoes. As usual, I wake up and do my self-cleaning in the morning. Then I eat breakfast, then I walk to school. At school, I seem to smell a rather stinky smell. Mama, everyone, else, everyone else smells it too because students are plugging their noses shut and breathing through their mouths. No one knows where the smell came from, so they just go to the home room. In the home room, the air vent system is better than in the hallway, so I can't smell anything. But as soon as I walk out the door, I might have found out where the smell came from. It was from Nate's shoes. At first, I don't, I don't seem to care about it, but when I'm near him, I can see visible stick lines on his shoes, like it was from a garbage dump or that I mean washed clean for 10 years. And, but his bed, I haven't told you this yet, but Nate is the stinkiest student in school, ever. In the morning, he usually goes to school with a t-shirt that's filthy and a pair of wet shorts. Nate's locker's even worse. There is so much stuff in there that it will take, that it will completely squash the piece of styrofoam to pulp. When he opens his locker to get his books in the morning, he has to <coughs> dig the mess for about 50 minutes before he can find the right book. But his bedroom is a new story. It's practically a trash dump. Mm -hmm. There's so much junk that must take a few days to clean up. I'd rather a week that doesn't care. Lying in the hall of trash, that's what he calls bedroom. He says it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. For him, his bedroom is like heaven to him. But I must say that, that it stinks like high heavens in there. Back to the original story. After I saw that, I yelled out, P.U. Had started to turn at me. I said, look at Nate's shoes. That's where the smell is coming from. You can see visible stink lines on it. Okay. Students started to turn the direction I was pointing to. Some students says P.U. like me. Some say E.U. Ropes. Gross. From that day on, no one plays with Nate anymore. Not even his, not even Francis, his best friend. When Nate is in the hallway, no one wants to be near him. They all ran away. Mm -hmm. Luckily, my locker was far away from him, so I don't need, so I didn't need to worry about him. Back to Nate, he doesn't even feel lonely. He even thanked us for staying away from him. It's great and has increased since the day everyone know where the smell was coming from. He says that ever since then, no one has come to his house anymore, so he has had more time to do his homework. He even has time on his hands and knees and earns a little bit of money. He has been coming to school with better clothes lately, and he bought himself a pair of new shoes that are sporty but not too flat. Okay. And of course, his shoes doesn't don't smell anymore. He says that he has been doing work in his neighborhood and he just opened his bag yesterday. He said he put in it $100 and he's hoping for it to grow. 
Hey, John, is that a true story? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, it, I swear! I swear, this is actually. I think this is actually based on the book called Big Nate, where uh, Nate Nate Wright has his best friend called um Francis Pope, and he's very dirty. And in um like the fifth volume of Big Nate, he's actually um like um. Oh hell no! For John, that's for um, John. Because I was trying to find a picture with you said stink lines. I mean, how do you get stink lines on your shoes? I don't see how. I do. Like, how would you get oh, stink hey. oh, How would you yeah. get stink hey. lines on your shoes, oh, you guys? Ah. John, do you mean that? I mean, I still don't understand how you would find stink lines on your shoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, teacher so, so, Brendan, teacher Brendan. What? what? At first, I didn't understand what does the PU mean, but. Yeah, you asked me, what does that mean, PU? <laughs> P U oh, right. um, yourself. Yes, P yourself. Okay. P -U, Tim Tim created P U. It means uh pneumono ultra microscopic and it's P U for short, right, John? <laughs> it's just a joke. Pneumono ultra microscopic. All right, maniacs. Uh, let's have somebody else read. How about that nice Ellis 11, right, you guys? How about me, you guys please? Are... Oh, all right. Please. We'll do Tim and then we'll do Ellis. Okay. So yeah. Tim. Tim, this is this really cool story about terraforming. I thought this was pretty cool because this is like a classic science fiction style, Tim. Yeah. And, and I thought pretty cool because you know why Tim is a good sci-fi writer? Because Tim puts details in his story that sound like he gets stuff from a science textbook. And that's a really strong skill to have if you want to be a sci-fi writer. It Here you go, Mr. You may think life is impossible on Mars. Here you go, Tim. You would think life is impossible on Mars. Does you? No way. In this story, myself, along with my helper, Robot Curiosity, Curiosity will terraform Mars. <laughs> I prepare some food, uh, drinks, some seeds, a microscope, astronaut clothes, a teleport machine, <laughs> some nature at... Nitrate. Nitrate, a picker machine, a camera, some wood, a flint and steel, lots of soil, and a big axe. I sit, uh, oh, I then teleport it to Mars. Once there, I see robot curiosity. I sit on the robot. The go robot goes automatically. Uh... And then I start taking pictures of Mars. I command, robot, go to a place where we can have water. Two hours later, we reach the North Pole. I get out the robot, burn some wood, and put it in the ice cave. I put my water in the picker machine. It's about five liters of water and about 21 pieces of coal. I go back to the robot and go to go to the flat land. I use my pickaxe to dig the rocks about 50 centimeters. Then I put the soil and nitrate in. Next, I put some seeds and water in, in them. The farm area is about 20 square kilometers. Don't worry. My pick uh, machine does this for me. It plants rice, lettuce, some potatoes, nuts, etc. And I call this big farm. The advertisement calls everyone to try to come here. I live here and this becomes a tour for other visiting Earth people to be continued. Nice, Tim. I love that the place is just called Big Farm. <laughs> it's kind of just a real basic name. Hey, Tim, I told you that this story reminds me of the Martian Chronicles. You guys, last week, we read that um, short story, just part of it, by Ray Bradbury. His most famous book, though, is The Martian Chronicles. And it's about all these um, American spaceships go to Mars to start a colony there. Hey, um, teacher, do you yeah, know... This is a great story. Uh, do you know uh, chronological order? Chronological order, yes, by time order, you guys. 
So you guys, this Martian Chronicles, it's a collection of short stories. And one of them in there is very close to what Tim said. It's about a guy who goes to Mars and he creates trees and he meets the Martians because they actually made this into a movie. But ah, the teacher. Martians are kind um, of sad, right? My story has got three episodes. All right, we'll make more episodes. That's really good. Um, you guys, so on Mars, they find the old Mars buildings, but the Martians went away. But what's really strange about the Martians is they come back sometimes. They can like travel in time and space. So the Martians are really sad that they had to say goodbye, but they, um, they do come back and they don't really get along with the humans. Um, they just, the Martians are really weird. So they see the rockets coming and they know that something bad is going to happen. So I won't tell you secret what bad things happen, but it's a great story. So Tim, one of the rockets carries a, a guy. He likes to be all by himself and he plants trees all over Mars and it creates better oxygen because the oxygen wasn't so good on Mars when the first astronaut got there. He had to wear a mask. And so... Um, Oh, and by the way, when the Martians kill the first astronauts, oh, I shouldn't tell you that, but they kill many astronauts first. Do you see this weapon he has? Do you know what's inside the weapon, you guys? What's that, teacher? Martian Stinger. Martian laser. And he shoots it, and the insect flies out, and he bites the astronaut, and you die instantly because the poison is so strong. So that's like an amazing story. The Martian ah, teacher. Uh, yes. A laser. A uh, laser, laser, uh, so, laser cars could, uh, could solve that. If you guys like reading Naked and Bone, you guys could read the Martian Chronicles. It's really... Uh, teacher, uh, yeah. laser cars uh, can crash the people uh, and cause accidents. Laser cars. Hey, Mr. Bone, would you like to read? Hey, Jason, Tom is too boring now because he went to read his... Yeah, who was that? Was that Tom or Bone? Tom. Tom, hey, Tom, do you want to read? Yeah. All right. Hey, Bone, can I read yours really quickly, or do you want to read it? It's kind of long. Yeah, it's um, kind of long. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Bone, you read this part, and then I'll read this part, okay? Okay, okay here we go. Bone's going to read just the paragraph okay. here, and then I'll read. No money is watching you. Hey, Tom. In the year 3024. <laughs> but you have a chair. All right, there you go, Bone. Where? Did you can see the screen? Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Thanks, Kevin. I didn't put the share screen on because I was still caught on that book. Here we go, Bone. There you go. You get the blue first paragraph, of course, because it's your writing. Okay. In the year 3024, the world has changed so much that humans of our era could not even recognize Earth. In that year, technology had improved so much and now we're in a big trip into space looking for stinky aliens that could be friends with us or harm us. Your special army force has taken this mission. Okay, I'm in that mission and now I'm really excited. Okay, so we started this mission on September 12, 3024. We are packed with 45 million, 450 million calories of food. Each person has a laser gun, a window maker, and bombs. We are also charged with a special type of battery to reload the weapon because those are all laser guns. The spaceship was charged with 494 million metric tons of fuel, which can last for 100 years. All right. Hey, Bone, read one more, and then I'll read one more. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> After more than a month waiting for it, finally the big day had come. All the people from the world watched this on their TV or at the station. We are wearing space suits and are all ready for the MIG mission. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The spaceship start its entry and then it dive into the air, left behind a bunch of black smoke. We fly into space, and then a few minutes later, we are in space. All right, now read this one. Be careful, someone said, while the spaceship is stopping at a huge planet with creatures who look like aliens. I step out on the planet smelling some kind of green mint smell, eucalyptus leaf smell, and some other great smells of the planet. What is this planet, I asked. 
it tells that this planet hasn't gotten its name yet. People call it B216. But the aliens aren't looking very friendly, so we are thinking of a plan. So first we will kill the bad aliens, explore the planet to see if this is a planet where people can live or not. And then we will talk to the friendly ones uh, and ask if it's okay to build an Earth colony on their planet. They might be able to make friends with us. Here you go, Mr. Bone. Read another one. Okay. Take your pen and batteries, the leader shouted, and everyone grabbed their, grabbed their laser gun and their batteries. Phew! The leader shouted, and everyone began to shoot. I shot some of the very big ones and the little unfriendly ones. The aliens are more than 150 one meters tall, except the baby ones and the friendly ones. The friendly aliens are not afraid at all because the bad aliens have done very bad things to them. After more than an hour of killing aliens, we went back to the ship and had our dinner with a stick, fried french fries, and corn, which I really liked. After that, we went to bed so we can start an early morning the next day. Nice, Bon. I like that you had steak, corn, and french fries. <laughs> We woke up after seven hours of sleeping and began to explore the new planet and we found out that this was a wonderful planet. The friendly aliens look very much like humans and we asked them to make friends so we can share the planet. Yes, you are welcome, an alien responded. From now, we will call them e-humans. This planet is very green and with many different types of trees and some of them do not exist on earth. I can smell the smell of golden diamonds. And we asked them, do they have any? It turns out that they are really rich because you can easily find gold or diamonds when you dig up the dirt for only two centimeters, you'll find them. Wow. And there you go, Bone, you can read that last piece. So after that, we had made the special door that exists everywhere on earth and on the new planet so we can get from this planet to the other planet in an easy way. Very nice, Bone. Excellent work. <laughs> like they find diamonds and gold. Hey, Mr. Tom, would you like to read? Because Tom was waiting so hard. Tom, you waited so hard, I'm going to call you Thomas. Mr. Yeah. Thomas, what is I'm the name of your please. story? I'm not the train. I'm not the train. So please. Don't. <laughs> Tom, what's the name of your story, though? Do not get so much. Gold or else. Wait, Tom, I'm trying to find it. Where is Don't it? Don't get too much gold or else you <laughs> will die. Tom, what is this called? Tom, You're going to shut up. I will open Zalo. Oh, yeah, I'm going to open Zalo. That's a good idea. Was that uh, somebody spooky Bach or Ken? Oh, uh, open Zalo. Every time I open Zalo, it explodes, you guys. Okay, we have Doom. Doom. I don't know if Doom's here tonight. How we many, have how many uh, stories are we gonna read? I'm gonna try to get as many as I can. I, I still want to do Kevin, and I want to do Spooky Buck and Naked. So if we can do four stories in the next twenty minutes, do you think we can do that, you guys? I think. Yeah. Okay, we'll, hey, we'll try, try, try. Oh, try oh, oh, okay. Okay. As, the, as the Japanese always say, "You must try. You must try." They always say what that. What about in me? Who is me? Me is me. Me is me. <laughs> is that, is that Alia. Alia? Alia, okay, Alia, you get to read your story too. Alia's story and Doong's story. Do not get too much good or else. Is that you, Tom? Tom, who wrote that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, is, is that you? Do not get too much good or else? Yeah. I found it. Yay. All right, here you go, Mr. Tom. I'm going to share the screen. This sounds funny. Do not get too much good or else. It sounds like some sort of warning. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, it's kind of big. Uh, okay, so try your best, Tom. You read fast. Oh, teacher, 